Long ago, a wanderer brought an enthralling gift to the people of Embervale. The elixir. It was a cure, a blessing, a weapon. Once concealed by the ancients, its might had been set free. With it came power, mistrust, and a longing for more. First off, I received a review copy of this game for free from Keymailer and the Devs. I was not paid to promote this game, and all opinions are my own. Holy crap, first our Zet and now this. I cannot believe the review keys I've been getting so far. I just wanted to stop for a second right off the top here and say thank you to everyone for watching. I've only been uploading again for about a month, and the growth has been absolutely staggering. If you guys keep watching, liking, and subscribing, I'll keep getting more and bigger games to review. Woo! Win-win! So, Enshrouded is a third-person survival-slash-building-action RPG taking most of its style cues from a fun combination of FromSoft's Dark Souls series. I personally feel a lot of Elden Ring in here, but that might just be because it's the one I've played the most. And the newer Zelda titles, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. One thing that's setting this apart from other survival slash crafting games, especially for me, is the world has been handcrafted by the devs. That means no procedural generation here. This really gives a level of cohesion that's sometimes lost when stuff's built randomly. Now, speaking of the world, you're allowed to use the same character you create in different people's games, so say you had a group of friends who started playing a couple of weeks ago, you could jump into their campaign straight away and learn through your friends rather than the provided tutorial. I think that level of customization in how you play is honestly genius. I'm not sure why more games don't follow this model. I would have killed to have an official Elden Ring co-op mode. <laughs> Gameplay-wise, I would compare it mostly to Valheim, though my experience with Valheim is fairly limited. I'm gonna say right off the bat here that I'm not the biggest fan generally of survival games. I kinda get overwhelmed with options and find myself getting discouraged, hence the not much experience with Valheim. So, most of my crossover gameplay-wise here is going to be with Tears of the Kingdom, Elden Ring, and the open-world Hogwarts game. Now, combat itself feels really nice. You start off with simple controls, attack, dodge roll, run, and as you progress, you'll obtain new skills and equipment, both of which increase your options for combat. You'll want to pick up both the sneak attack and stagger attacks as early as possible. I found there was no better way to clean out an enemy camp than being sneaky early on. If you decide to take the front-on approach, be prepared to die. A lot. Even the first enemies in the game will drop you in a couple of hits while you're still running around in your underwear. The death penalty will throw everything in your backpack, but not on your action bar on the ground. One nice touch I found that I super appreciated was that if you die on the way back to your body, it does not despawn your first corpse, a la Dark Souls. This also led to a funny moment where I hadn't opened my map in a while, and I didn't realize how much I had died, and uh... Saw a cluster of like six or seven of my corpses all littered around an enemy camp. So if you're wondering where the title comes from, the world is covered in a heavy fog called the Shroud that slowly saps your life as you remain within it. You'll increase your time limit as the game goes on, but early on you're going to want to move as quickly as possible so as not to expire. This leads to fun moments where you'll have to weigh whether you have enough time to clean up the end of the enemies you're fighting or you'll have to hightail it prematurely in order to save your own skin. I'm also a big fan of the magic system in Enshrouded, at least insofar as I've played. You can find and craft spell charges, and then equip them in your action bar. When you then hold a staff in your hand, you'll get an easy swap through menu to select your spells on the fly to easily blast your opponents. You'll also get wands early on, which, at least in my case, worked as the as long as this has durability left, you can keep shooting weapon. Once I found a nice fire wand, it really made it a lot less necessary for me to continually craft arrows to keep the enemies off my balls. I bet I died a lot. I did? Well, I, I died a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. It was a total skill issue on my part, and I don't feel as though the game was unfair. Except for the time where I slid down a cliff, lost a decent chunk of my stuff, and then it decided to put my loot on an impossible-to-reach outcropping. That sucked. The grappling hook's fun when you get to use it, but I understand why you can't use it everywhere. It'd bust a lot of the progression in this game, and I mean, as much as I love to bust things, eh, I understand that they want you to play the game in the way they want you to play the game. 
Now, building is what it is. I personally haven't interacted with it very much, but it's also not really my genre of choice. Now, that being said, I really couldn't stay away with all the similarities to Zelda and other games I already enjoy. Now, onto the graphics. This game is gorgeous, if very, very demanding hardware-wise. Now, all the footage you've been watching is recorded by me, so if you notice any chugging, I wanted to leave that in just to show exactly what I was seeing. It's only fair to you guys that you're getting the real experience, just like me. Most of the time, it was very pretty and smooth, but I definitely did need DLSS to get a 60 plus frame rate at 2K, and normally I don't find I need that until I get to 4K. Regardless of that though, the vistas in Enshrouded are breathtaking, but in a different way than I enjoyed the beautiful views in, say, Elden Ring. I find the contrast of a very red forward palette in the distance mingled with the dull bluish tones of the corrupted misty grasslands to lend to a very unique and beautiful visual style. Delving into the dark and claustrophobic mines and cave systems is also a blast, with lots of phosphorescent plants to ogle as you make your way deeper and deeper. Props to the art department, this baby looks fine. The music as well is good. I hadn't heard any really standout tracks until I hit the top of the first tower, and a gorgeous Celtic feeling track started to play. I mean, I felt like I was transported to the highlands of Wales. The combat music also sets a nice tone. Whenever I'd be walking through a field and hear it kick in, I'd immediately swing my camera around to try and usually fail to find my assailant before I got one shot back to camp. There are some good tracks here when the music decides to ramp up, otherwise you'll have perfectly pleasant orchestral scores to fill your land schlepping journey. On to my final thoughts. Enshrouded's a gorgeous, combat-forward blast to mess around with, especially with friends. The well-fleshed-out and planned world does wonders to cut out some of the humdrum boredom of lifeless, computer-generated lands usually found in the survival crafting genre. This is another one where I probably wouldn't try to go into it on a particularly old computer. My not really professional opinion would be anything less than a 5700 XT or a 2060 Super is probably not going to be the best experience, even at 1080p. If you've got a computer with enough horsepower to run this puppy and you enjoy intense combat along with chill crafting and building, this is basically everything you could ever want. Even in early access, the amount of content here will keep you going for hours and hours. And as always, thank you so much for watching. It really, really means a lot. If you like what I'm doing here, please give me a like and subscribe for more stuff like this. Have an awesome day. Bye!